Students, on our continuing discussion on diabetes and exercise, this is our second one, and we're going to discuss the risks involved with exercise. But let us remember that exercise is an excellent, excellent thing for the diabetic. Let's start with numbers. What we have here are the numbers. Let's start with the 100 milligrams per deciliter. You think, okay, that's adequate enough to go out and exercise. We need to have a little bit of caution. If the patient or the diabetic has 100 milligrams, our text tells us that they should have a snack prior to exercise. Okay. Now, avoid exercise when? Well, we have a avoid here. When the blood sugar is 250 milligrams per deciliter with this qualifier that they have ketones. They're in ketosis. When they have ketones in their ketosis, no exercise. Ketones, no exercise. All right. Now, caution here. Caution if blood sugar is 300 milligrams per deciliter. Can they exercise? Yes. Caution, though, uh, they have to not have ketones at 300. If they have ketones, no. Now, let's go and talk about monitoring blood sugar levels during exercise. Glucose monitoring. First, we have the patient who's on insulin. A little bit more involved here. And what our text will tell us is the patient should monitor their blood sugar before they start exercising, during exercise, and after. That's our patient who's on insulin therapy. What if they're non-insulin? A little bit easier. The recommendation according to our text is before they start exercising and after. Okay. Now, we're going to get into a little bit of the uh, physiological points that's going on during exercise. Hormones regulate the glucose level during exercise. We know that uh, when the insulin level goes down, the glucagon level goes up, that is going to cause the blood sugar to rise. Okay. Now, a great supply of sugar is the liver, hepatic glucose. Now, that will be dependent on two hormones, if you will. Glucagon will raise the blood sugar during exercise. Glucagon will raise it. And catecholamines, adrenaline, epinephrine, norepinephrine, noradrenaline, that will also raise the blood sugar through the liver. Okay? So we have this mechanism going on. Now, we know that we talk about our diabetics as being type 1, and type 2. This makes a big difference when it comes to exercise. Okay, here we go. With the type 1 diabetic, they're at risk for hyperglycemia. They may be at risk for hyperglycemia. How come? Well, their insulin levels may go down, and as those go down, eventually the body's going to have to break down fats, and then we're going to get ketone bodies, and when we get ketone bodies, we're susceptible to what? Diabetic ketoacidosis. Diabetic ketoacidosis. Their insulin level goes down, they end up having to break down fatty acids, and they're at risk for diabetic ketoacidosis. Interesting now for the type 2 diabetic. The type 2 diabetic at risk for hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia. Well, how is that? Remember, exercise causes the cells to be more sensitive to the work of insulin. That being said, as the cells become more sensitive to the insulin, the cells end up taking the sugar and the blood glucose levels go down. Hypoglycemia, risk factor for type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, risk factor for hyperglycemia. Now, another uh, caution up here. The patient who's on insulin, we always have to remember what is the peak time of their insulin. Okay. When does their insulin kick in at the peak? When is it at its greatest? And if you exercise during the peak time, you're at great risk for hypoglycemia. Very risky. You're taking NPH in the morning, you maybe exercise late in the afternoon. 
doesn't sound like perfect timing. Risk for hypoglycemia. Number two, we want to remember that if you're into strenuous exercise, maybe weightlifting, giving all you've got in the moment, huh, be careful. The blood pressure may go up suddenly, and that can cause danger or risk factors to the retina of your eyes and your kidneys. Okay, now, there we go. Exercise is a good thing. And, but we have to make sure the patient's educated on the risk factors and what to do. Thank you for listening.